Hey YouTube, Awesome Rider here. Welcome to my review for the Super 7 Dragon Zord Black Gold Edition, which was a Comic Con exclusive, but they made it available on their site. Pretty easy to get, which is always nice for those of us that can't go to Comic Con or don't want to track down crazy e buy. E buy prices, them gets nuts, man. But yeah, it's really nice that they made it so easily available because I'm a huge sucker for Black Gold Edition uh, repaints of Mecha and Megazords, and I usually try to collect most of them I can get my hands on. So I wanted to get this. Interestingly, this comes out or is available to us before the actual main one which I believe comes out in Wave 2, but kind of gave me a sneak preview of the mold. Uh, let's talk about accessories first. So you've got three different sets of hands. On him, you kind of just have the generic ones, which you see, and then you get the blasting hands, which they're really easy to switch out, to be honest. Uh, this was the same with the other figures, is they're really nice and easy to switch out, but they don't feel like they're too loose. Uh, so it's pretty simple there. I don't really like these version of the hands. They almost look more like weird painted nails. I mean, it's kind of funny, but it doesn't look as epic. You do have a lot of problems with like the paint kind of chipping off here. Like you can see the gold paint there. I don't know if that'll become a problem all around, but for that you can sort of see the residue of it when you're switching the hands out, but it's really easy to do there. And then you also have some closed fists, which if I'm going to be honest, I think some of the other releases uh, for Dragon Zord came with the closed fists, but I don't remember him ever closing his fists in the show. Not that it's a huge deal, it's just kind of funny to think about. You also have this tiny little uh, Green Ranger figure that the camera doesn't want to focus on at the moment. Wait for it! There we go, which is actually pretty decently detailed for it. It's kind of neat, nice little accessory, kind of like the ones that come with Zap. It's kind of neat, but for me, like, unnecessary. Like, it's neat that it comes with it, but if it didn't, then, you know, I wouldn't be too upset. Oh, like, it's probably, you know, uh, I don't know, a nitpick or too much, but it would have been cool for it to be a, kind of a black gold version of the Green Ranger. That would have been kind of neat. They also do come with these neat little power coins. So far, we've only had Tyrannosaurus and then this one, but it's really neat. They're really actually really well done uh, die cast coins that look pretty neat. Um, if you're wondering if they work in like the Hasbro morphers and stuff, they don't exactly fit. Like they stick out and then come out pretty easily. But if you really like like the way it looks, you know, if it's on display sitting there, it will hold. Obviously, I can't use a Green Ranger morpher because we don't have one. Side note, you know, it seems like we're going to be getting a Master Morpher, but it'll be crazy. To to me if we never got a Tommy Morpher before Hasbro takes its paws. But anyway, let's talk about the figure itself. Overall, I've mostly been pleased with the quality of these Super 7 figures I've gotten. They definitely feel kind of weirdly hit and miss in terms of how they look. Like, I thought the Green Ranger was a little oddly proportioned but looked good. The T-Rex was the strongest release for me, and speaking of, uh, here it is next to the T-Rex. I'm not exactly sure how accurate the scale is, to be honest. For me, that's close enough. Honestly, I've never given a shirt about it being 100% accurate, but that's close enough for me. But I brought him in, too, to talk about how this is my favorite release I've gotten so far from this, is it's really one of the most accurate uh, Tyrannosaurus Zord figures I've ever had, and it's just really, really cool, which is one of my favorite things about it, and it got me excited for more potential Zord releases. Although, we're pretend I guess we're going to possibly be stopping after, or likely stopping after the White Ranger figure we're getting. This, unfortunately, isn't as accurate. I think it's very cool and good-looking, but it's a lot, like, kind of stockier like he looks like he's like hunched in and he's like really boxed in like he's almost wearing a cardboard version of the costume it doesn't look bad it almost has this charmingly retro feel to it like compared here this is the zap dragon zord you can see the differences obviously you know this is a black gold release and this one isn't but you can see the more accurate mold a little bit because it is a stocky zord to be sure, but he still has a little bit of a neck, and I was looking at pictures from it. So if you're looking for accuracy, it's not really the best thing. Obviously, it's, you know, different when you're doing a black gold edition, but this is the same mold. And I bring that up because even though I do like this one, it's having me second guess picking up the main version of it. If I find a sale for it, I might, but it, since it doesn't have that same draw of being this really accurate figure like T-Rex, um, I probably won't pick up the main one, because it does have, again, a charmingly retro feel, almost like, you know, this is obviously inspired by Godzilla, but this almost feels like it's an extra layer of stylized, like, inspiring it based off of some of the Godzilla designs where it's a little bit more restricted movement, so it's got a stylized feel to it if you're into that, but my primary reason for getting the main ones was, to be honest, I really like the accuracy on T-Rex, so I probably won't pick up the main one unless I get on sale. That being said, this is still an overall solid figure. I really do like the quality and feel of these. The paint looks really nice. The black gold paint job on this is beautiful. You know, it's one of my favorite color schemes. That's why I collect all these different Zords for it. And the primary reason I got this was I wanted the black gold version. So even though the accuracy has put me off uh, picking up the more expensive regular main version, not that it's more expensive than this, but like spending more money on that, um, I'm happy with this release because the reason I wanted it was the black gold of it. Uh, you do have some articulation and stuff like that, but it's very minor because it's kind of not as mobile of a Zord. You just have a ball joint here. You have a small little ball joint here for like bending the knee a little bit and a little ball joint at the foot. Uh, you have some articulation on the tail here at the various points so you can sort of get some movement on there. Uh, you can move the waist here up and down. Um, his head
head doesn't move or anything like that, but you can open and close his mouth ever so slightly. So pretty much what you'd expect, you know, the, oh, and the arms as well. They can just move up and down. Actually, there's a little bit more movement on the zap release, uh, which is kind of nice. Again, it's meant to be a restrictive Zord, but I wish there was a little bit more to it. But overall, I, like I said, I really like the solid quality and feel of it. The paint job on it looks great. It really is nice looking. I'm personally happy with it because, like I said a couple times before, I bought this because I'm a black gold Megazord Mega Collector and I really thought this was neat. And they have done previous ones before. Um, I, I'll put up a picture because I don't have it on hand, but they did do a uh, Dragon Zord Black Gold Edition, if I recall, for Bandai. And I'll put up a picture of that. So, you know, if you have that already, you might not want this. But I'm happy with this because it's still a solid quality feeling figure, which is one of my favorite things about these uh, figures I've gotten so far, um, is that they do feel like kind of worth the price in the sense that it feels like a high-end collectible. Uh, but for me, I'm just happy with it because it's a black gold release that I like. If you're a fan of those like me and you've been liking the Super 7 releases so far, I can recommend checking it out. However, you know, it's not for everybody. Obviously, these repaints aren't a must-have for everybody. And I don't think I will be picking up the primary release of the Dragon Zord unless I see it on sale. Not that it's bad by any means. I think it's overall pretty cool looking and solid, but it doesn't have that same level of accuracy. Like I mentioned earlier in the review, uh, this, this line has been really weird in terms of, like, uh, accuracy and stuff like that. I have the Green Ranger. He looks a little lanky but it looks pretty good. But yellow looked a little bit off, so I didn't pick it up. Um, and then T-Rex looks really great and super accurate, and this not so much. And it's kind of hit and miss, which is why I'm being really selective with the ones I pick up for this line. Like I said, I'd be more than happy to pick up the main release for this if it happens to go on sale. But as it stands, I probably won't be picking it up at regular price. But that's about it for this one, guys. Until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps, and ring that bell so you can get notifications for my videos. Dawson Ryder, signing out.